All right, I come over here in front of the Synchrowave uh, 250. This is our, our, our only TIG welding so source and has been holding up the shop now for 20 years. This is, uh, we got this back in uh, May of 1995. So I grabbed the manual here and it just happened to have the date on it. Um, and everything is 100% original. And I did add these two gauges on and these will be the gauges that will be zooming in on and you'll be able to read what I'm drawing as far as my currents and outputs during my weld. Now, everything's original on here except I, I bought the, the Miller Coolmate 4. Um, I bought that about four or five years after I purchased the, the welder. Well, I, was, I, was, I was in this building here and I was over at the other building for three years before I moved into the shop here and took ownership of the property um, and I I got rid of my home homemade cooler I had a just a wooden box with a heater heater core from a Scout 2 with a fan on the box and I drew it through and I plumbed in and out of it put a little giant the biggest little giant pump in a five gallon pail of antifreeze and, and that's what I cycled through and that's what I cooled my torch with and uh, so I upgraded to the Coolmate 4 uh, because I added on the second link of lead because I was going twice as far, uh, two links now away from my machine and I wanted to guarantee that I was pumping enough coolant so that's why I ended up getting that. The, the other piece that I actually had that, that uh, took a dump was this metal foot pedal and uh, I mean these things were rugged and uh, you could throw them and kick them around you could actually stand up on them on one foot and still TIG weld and um, the, the the variable control inside this uh, blew out and I was gonna send it in and have it repaired and of course uh, uh, they give you the whole hum and all of that down there and they want to sell you this no, new little plastic pedal here with this little lightweight cord and uh, I went through a bitchy period with this um, for a while uh, just I knew or I had a feeling that I was gonna trash this thing out faster than I trashed out the metal one the, the, the giant super dude there and then all of a sudden I have the skinny cord I have this plastic and um, <laughs> I mean I still have it today I haven't there's no damage no nothing it was lightweight you can put it between your knees and you could heal you sometimes I'm out on the trailer outside or I'm uh, inconvenient I can't step on a pedal I'm, I'm somewhere and uh, up in the air or whatever and I need to I need to control the arc so I would squeeze it between here I mean you could do the armpit thing I've uh, I've had it in areas where you you put it up against the wall or whatever and, and you, you're doing this maneuver here so it had a lot of advantages, but at that time I thought I thought it was being cheated, and uh, so anyway, it's 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 working fine. All right, let's um let's zoom in here a little bit and let's look underneath the cover down here. All right, over here is the set of contactors, and they only need to be adjusted if if they're out, and they're the high freak contactors. All right, they're basically an eight thousandths gap or so in there. That's uh, that's just I just wanted to point that that's your controlling factor for your high freak. The only thing that we're in here other than anything else, and the reason why I'm showing you in here is because we are going to be welding on high freak AC, and uh, you need to pay attention to all the adjustments. I'm going to go through all the adjustments that I'm running, so this just happens to be uh, uh, one of them. Now this little controller right here is the amount of wave on your high freak, and this adjustment here only has to do with your interference that you're causing and this is your adjustment so that you can set your high freak at the minimum that it takes to initiate it and keep it steady with minimum amount of interference to electronics around say like your telephone and, and, and other equipment and that's what this dial is for okay it has nothing to do with the performance of your weld other than keeping the initiation and it's stable and its minimum amount of disturbance to other things around and I, I've had it set on 50 and it's comfortable it doesn't bleed over onto my telephone as much as you know it does if you set it higher and everything else so you know this is the only thing that's down in here and uh, your remote controls all that here's you know your other accessories and uh, 
So let's zoom on out and, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and move you in so that you can see the top section here. All right, let's bring you in to where we got this panel pretty well taking up the screen here. All right, we know on and off. We swung this on over. We're in AC here. All right, this is high freak start up, off in the middle, continuous. We're running on continuous. We're running contactors out and the amperage control on remote. All right, we're not running a crater time or any accessory on here that we need to crater time, so that's off there. Um, Let's go up here to AC balance. AC balance um, it will give you uh, just your, your wave, curve your wave towards cleaning or penetration. And in three and up here is three is your neutral or balance. And then from there you can adjust it. And there's a, there's a little bit of a wide pattern on the three there. And most of the time you're right in there. All right, and that's where I'm going to leave it. I, uh, uh, the amperage, I run, by running the foot pedal, you can actually have your amperage adjustment a little bit higher than you actually need. It, 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 it lets that initiation of the arc, um, it gives you past where you actually need and your pedal and your initiation is, is crisp and, and right away. And then your, pe your pedal control you back off of that and then you're riding in in the range on the pedal. So this is only max setting here. Your pedal lets you feather your other amperage. And by watching these two meters right here while I'm welding, you'll be able to see the voltage and the amperage. All right, our control is only has to do with stick welding and when you're running low amperage and you're initiating low amperage in a vertical or overhead weld you can play around with your your uh, arc control and that can help you on initiating your arc or a stable in arc initiation all right now here is your dial here that gives you your post flow time all right and and it's broken up in increments of 1 16th 3 30 seconds 1 8th 530 seconds and one quarter inch tungsten. Okay, I don't think I've even seen a quarter inch tungsten. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I rarely ever use larger than the, than the one eighth. I think I might have a 530 seconds up there, but I've never even put it in the in the in a torch there. Um, I'm using 332. Now, this dial here is gives you a variable sweep it does it, this is not remember this is an older machine it's not digital so it doesn't have exactly digital uh, uh, I mean it, it's not cut and clean and dry in individual increments you have you have a variable that you're looking at a dial here now from there to there 10 to 20 seconds is your post flow time so when I get ready to fire this up we're gonna go ahead and we're going to click the pedal and we're going to count the seconds of post flow that you actually hear to what it actually says on, on the, on the faceplate here. Now, regardless of what this says up here, all you need on your post flow gas flow is the amount to keep your tungsten clean and clear of contaminants and holding it and surrounding your weld at the end to make sure that it stabilizes before it's cool enough and then you can back it away. That's all the post flow is. Extra post flow does not cause any less or any more weld damage uh, than having exactly the right amount of post flow. If you're short on this, then you could pull away or you could cool down and you could have contaminants before the temperature drops down to where the contaminants aren't going to stick to either your electrode or your weld. So we'll, we will check that out. Um, so basically that's all the settings that I need to set for this procedure except for turning on my gas and setting that flow and we're going to do that right now. Okay, we come back behind the, the welder here. This is where I store my bottles. They're chained to the wall back here so they're safe. They don't fall over. They're out of the way. 
and um, this is my argon here and I, I have two gauges here because I use this for purge gas on this side here but this is shut off now so th I run it through this gauge here this is my helium and its flow gauge over here I run a Y from both of these bottles into here just like you've seen on jo J you know uh, Jody at WeldingTipsAndTrick.com he actually showed this in one of his videos um, and I've been doing this for before I even had my own shop we did this at North Star Propeller at the same you know this is where I learned this technology or this um, this way of, of mixing gases was individual bottles and uh, putting it together yourself um, so, and I put an anti-back valve on the helium side just because I normally trickle this and I normally have a little bit more flow on this and I just want to make sure that I'm not flowing backwards through this line and I'm actually flowing it out um, it, the way it needs to be flowing. And um, so that's why I put the directional valve in there. All right, so I'm gonna fire off the machine because we need to have this running so that I can set the levels on these. So let me flip the machine on and I brought my foot pedal back here so that I can hit the foot pedal and create the, uh, the flow have my argon the amount that I want to have and then I just get the ball just barely bouncing like that on the helium this works for me and if I want more helium of course I don't I don't foresee it we're, we're gonna be doing a small weld and I'm not gonna need that amount but that little bit of helium makes all the difference on not having to put the metal to the pedal to, to, to get your your aluminum to uh, become molten all right and we're open there so we're ready to go we can come back around and uh, we can get started okay one last thing I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down this die I know that when you know we're not gonna use 200 amps to do any welding but I wanted to go ahead and be set there just so that you can see that this can be set at that level and as long as I get a good initiation of the start of my arc and everything else we can run it there and uh, I am right dead nuts on three on the balance so this combination right here will be what you actually see while I'm welding or initiate this project in the welding okay we're gonna we're gonna set this camera here and uh, I'm going to show you how I'm going to set this camera up here. Okay, I just want it to be nice and clear. And then I'll be able to read those two gauges. And I have enough frame around that to where I'll be able to crop that and then enter that into my editing on my videos so that you'll read those meters at the same time that you're actually watching the welding going on all right uh, the rod we're going to use is this 4643 and we're just going to take out a couple pieces here 4643 is a rod that is designed to bond to the base material with a little or small amount of diluting the base material and then building up a buildup on top of that and maintaining the aluminum and, and the integrity of, uh, of your component as a whole. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna lay a couple pieces of that over there. We're gonna switch out and uh, get my helmet here ready. All right, let's go over here. We're gonna actually, we gotta preheat our part here. All right, now we're gonna preheat this, not because it's, uh, um, 
anything big massive or anything else we just want to go ahead and initiate a temperature to start our build up and then maintain an inner pass temperature that kind of lets us build up and we might take a break here or there uh, between passes so that we have the consistency of building up from the base material all the way up around the same temperature. Just so that you can't put your hand on it. You just don't want a stone cold when you first start off a weld. All right, we're gonna set up the camera here. We're gonna get it on and we're gonna get focused down in here. And then we're gonna get the other camera on and we're gonna go ahead and initiate this. Okay, uh, let me get uh, this camera going here. All right, now we're on the, we got the gauges or the meters on the welder set up. We're zoomed in on the, the weld here. And uh, I'm getting my gloves on. All right, we can see, this is the laid out line right here. Right around the part there. Now I'm going to start in the valley right down here. And I'm going to build this height up until I get up to this deck right here. So I'm going to be starting down on this lower side here, and you should, you should be able to see that fairly good. Now, now I need to go ahead, I need to clean my tungsten here. I said I was going to do that. So let me grab a piece of steel. Okay, any steel plate's gonna work. Now, pull loose this ground here for a minute so I can put the ground right here. All right, and <clears throat> all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initiate an arc and then I'm gonna bring the torch up a little bit and I'm gonna floor it a little bit and we're gonna take and we're gonna clean the tungsten on, on the torch here. All right, and we're also, <clears throat> we're giving that end of the torch a gloss. I think I can hold this in. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a nice gloss on the end of there. All right, now let's go ahead and put our ball, or our all right, let's put our clamp back on here. Make sure we're zoomed in still in on our look here. Okay, I like that view. Get comfortable, okay. Now you can watch you can watch the uh, gauges there at the same time. Now I'm just initiating a puddle here. And you can see actually I puddled right onto one of those uh, punch marks. And I'm just following the line on the outside here. 
coming up to that edge. All right, now I'm gonna go over to the other side and I'm gonna work up the other side. I like going vertical. Now right in the middle. I'm making sure I melt right into that. Okay, we'll let that sit there for, oh, about 10 seconds here, 15 seconds. Okay, now we gotta come back out here. We gotta, we gotta create this outside edge here. Okay, now we're going to grab our box wrench here and we're holding it over our circle there. And I want to make sure that I come out here a little bit past that point there where I had that. Yeah, I know we're going to, we're going to radius right into this bottom section here. Whoops, didn't mean to shake you. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna come around here one more time on the outside edge here and then we'll be able to start making the full circle there. Kind of a nice visual guide and it definitely looks like we've got we've got the three-quarter building up there as long as we keep staying out on that outside edge there all right now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a ball right in the middle there you've got to make sure that that stays sound